Preacher 357 here, out here on the range bringing to you one of my favorite things in the whole world, if you couldn't guess, a 357 Magnum revolver. And this is a budget option known as the EAA Windicator. And uh, this gun is imported by European American Armory. And uh, it's manufactured in Germany by a company called Weirauch. And uh, Weirauch is the company that also made the Bounty Hunter, which is that uh, 1873 Colt uh, Peacemaker clone that uh, I have, that I did a video on, that I really like. I really like that one. And so here we have a 357 Magnum revolver, a little bit more modern style firearm, double action, single action. And uh, these run, you know, between four and $500 usually, depending on if you find them on sale. And they have several different versions. This is the four inch model in nickel. This is not stainless. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, the, the yellow tint it has to it, which is indicative of it being a nickel finish. But this is a nickel revolver, not a stainless. And it also comes in a blued finish. They come in two inch, four inch, and I think six and a, six and a half inch versions. So there's several different versions you can, you can choose from. I think the four inch is probably the best of uh, all worlds. Uh, generally, three or four inches is what I consider the best as far as revolvers go. Uh, this revolver is a budget option, as I said, which falls very much in line with the same price range as my Charter Arms Professional. So I thought I'd bring it out here for comparison. Maybe if you look at these two side by side, you can see the difference between a stainless and a nickel. You can see maybe the, the, the yellowish hue you have there with the nickel. Uh, one of the differences here you see is the uh, Windicator has a smaller cylinder. Of course they're both uh, six rounds, but it has a smaller cylinder. This is much more the size of a uh, Smith & Wesson K-frame cylinder wise, although it's a little beefier because it has this full heavy underlug and this is, this is a fairly hefty little gun here. Whereas the Charter Arms is, you know, a little bit uh, bigger cylinder, but overall a little smaller package, being a three-inch barrel, and uh, being a little bit lighter, I believe, than the the Windicator. But you know, they both fall into that four to five hundred dollar price range. So obviously, I can't help but uh, do a little bit of comparison between the two. So I'm gonna do a little bit of shooting, and I've been doing some shooting with this gun. Uh, this is my cousin's gun, actually. He just bought. And uh, we shot this last weekend. I've been shooting it a little bit again. And uh, so it's kind of dirty. It's not shiny as, uh, as it would be right out of the box. But, uh, you know, we shot this right out of the box and I've been shooting it some since. And I can tell you the first thing that I noticed when we got this out of the box and shot it is that the double action trigger on this gun can only be uh, described as atrocious. Absolutely horrific. Uh, heavy, but not just heavy, heavy and unbelievably inconsistent. It's like um, when you pull the trigger, it's such a heavy uh, start to, to the pull that when you overcome that initial heaviness, it just automatically goes off and fires, basically. You, once you get through that initial heaviness, you're pulling so hard that the rest of it just spins real quick. That does not bode well for accuracy when a gun does that. Now, with that said, that was right out of the box. As I shot this gun more and more, that inconsistency has went away. It's much more consistent now, but at the same time, it is uh, still extremely, extremely heavy. And uh, I mean, you can just, uh, this it, it is unloaded here. I'm just gonna do a little pull. I mean, it's, I say it's consistent and by comparison it is, but you know, I felt a lot better guns than this as far as trigger pull. It just, it feels odd. I guess this is the way I, I'd have to describe it. Um, this trigger does not feel like any other trigger I felt, which makes me think it may be a different type of mechanism here. And I really haven't, you know, taken the grips off to see. I'm assuming it's a coil mainspring on here, but I don't know. Uh, I tell you what, I'll take the grips off and uh, check on that and I'll post a picture and uh, let you know when, on the screen here somewhere of actually what uh, 
what type of mainspring it has, but it feels like a coil mainspring, but who knows? I don't know exactly how this thing is put together. It doesn't appear to have a side plate, which, you know, lends me to believe it's a fairly rigid frame, you know, much like a Ruger is a very rigid frame. So uh, I would say the frame on this gun is probably pretty strong. However, one thing about this gun that does worry me a little bit is the forcing cone. And I don't know if I can get a good picture uh, on, the, on the camera uh, of the forcing cone here. So I'll take a picture and put it up on the screen so you can see it. But the forcing cone on this uh, revolver is super thin. Now it doesn't protrude much out of the frame. So there's very little unsupported uh, to the, uh, the forcing cone. It's mostly supported inside the frame. It just barely sticks out. But what sticks out, you can see just how thin this forcing cone is. And by comparison, I'll show you the forcing cone on the, the uh, Trotter Arms Professional, which is much more like a Smith & Wesson forcing cone. And you can see how much beefier it is. So that worries me that if you're shooting a lot of hot loads, a lot of hot 357, that you could end up cracking that forcing cone. I don't know that it's happened. Like I said, there's not much sticking out, so it's mostly supported. Maybe it's not an issue. But that would worry me a little bit about this revolver. And so that's just something I thought I would, I would bring up. Top strap seems beefy. I mean, the frame seems beefy. The barrel seems beefy besides the forcing cone. Uh, and it does appear to be a two-piece barrel system, um, which is nothing wrong with that. A lot of people hate that on the Smith & Wessons, but you know, Dan Wesson has used two-piece systems for years. Colts have used them, and you know, there's nothing wrong with a two-piece system. Um, they can actually increase accuracy. There, there's nothing wrong with that, even if it does save money. There's nothing wrong with saving money as long as you don't sacrifice quality, which I know a lot of people think Smith has, but just the same. Those are my initial thoughts on this gun. Um, another thing is when I pull the trigger, it's almost like I can feel the spring, the tension of the spring. Like I can feel it expanding and contracting. You know, kind of like with the old screen door when you would open it up, you kind of get that feeling of the spring, you know. Which leads me to believe maybe it's not as high quality spring as you might be getting in some of the other guns maybe but I'm just guessing here. And so I'm thinking it's quite possible that, uh, you know, with, with time and a lot of trigger pulls, that the trigger pull will get lighter as that spring gets weaker and weaker and weaker, which is fine until you get to the point where obviously it's too weak to set off the primers. But, you know, I don't know if that would ever be a problem or not. I haven't had this gun long enough, haven't put enough rounds through it. I mean, we're talking years here probably before that would happen. But, you know, I'm not an expert, I'm not a metallurgist, I don't know that much about springs. So in all likelihood, you know, I'm just elaborating out of my posterior orifice. But it's something that uh, kind of comes to mind when I, when I feel this, uh, with this trigger. That it just kind of feels like I can feel that spring in there. And uh, anyway, that's just my impressions for what they're worth. It's not, not a fact, just an impression. And somebody out there probably knows a lot more about these than I do because this is my first time ever messing with one of these at all. And I've only had it about a week or so and really haven't had a lot of time to, to put into it. So I'm hoping to learn a little bit more about it as we go. But, uh, you know, when I was shooting this on paper earlier, you know, to uh, get the intro to the video done, I noticed that it's a fairly accurate revolver in single action. When I shoot it in single action, I not bad at all fairly impressive uh double action is a little harder uh, you know i shoot a lot of double action revolver so i tend to feel like i can shoot double action well but i really have to concentrate i mean i really have to concentrate in double action you know with a smith and wesson i can shoot double action i don't really have to think about it that much it just feels natural but uh, with this it's not natural i mean you really have to concentrate so Without further ado, let's do a little bit of shooting. We'll start out here with uh, some, uh, I'm going to start with 38 Special. And these are just some, uh, I think it's some American Eagle lead round. And uh, they're 158 grain, just a standard old lead round. And we'll start over here on the red plates. I'm going to start single action. 
try to ease into it and then see if I can hit anything in uh, double action mode. That's not too bad, guys. Not too bad for a $400 revolver. Let's put a few more rounds in here. And by a few, I mean six, because that's what it holds. And we're gonna try these two smaller plates again. See if maybe I can luck into hitting these things. And then I'm gonna try some double action on the, the cowboy and the plate out at 80, I'm sorry, 35 yards. Oh, I got that one, I think. May have just grazed him, but I got it. There we go. There's one in single action. Double action. Now I'm out of ammo before I can get to that white plate. All right. Put a few more of these lead round in here. These are factory loads, as I said. And I've got some of my hand loads as well, which are 158 grain, but they're semi-wad cutters. Oh, I take that back. My 38 special I've got out here is actually uh, 125 grain. I've got 158 grain, 357 magnum. Uh, all right, let's go out here to 35 and see if I can get this one. Takes a lot of concentration on that trigger. But not too bad. Not too bad at all. One more factory around here. And I'll put some of my hand loads in here too. So far, you know, I can't say that I dislike this gun, but the trigger pull obviously is not what I would want. But in single action, it's not bad at all. The single action trigger pull is, is actually pretty good on this gun. I don't think it's as good as the Charter Arms Professional. That single action is unbelievably good. But the double action on the Charter Arms is, is far better than this one, without a doubt. So let's go out here to, uh, let's go out here to 80 yards, see if I can hit this red plate out here. I don't think there's any chance I'll, I'll be able to do it, but. I didn't see that one. Saw that one, all right. Didn't see that one. There we go. Did I skip it in? I can't tell, I saw dust. Let's go out here to 100. I saw dust that time. Yeah, that one's a little off to the left too. Out of, out of ammo. Have to hold up a little bit more on that one. But since I'm out of the 38 special, let's go ahead and get some of these 357 Magnums in here. Don't want to lose my man card. Honestly, these 357s, these 125 grains here, which are uh, defense dynamics uh, rounds that my cousin had bought online, I believe. These do not kick a lot in this gun. I mean, they got some flash and bang, but you know they really don't kick a lot. So. Let's see if I can hit this 100 yard plate with them. It gets a little low. I heard that one. That was a little low, gotta hold up just a little more. I didn't see that one. I didn't see that one either. You know, at uh, 10 yards, I was shooting really well with that 357, it looked like. And out there at 100, surprisingly, there seemed to be some drop off. Having to hold higher than I was expecting. And maybe that's why those don't kick very much. I mean, they say they're 1,450 feet per second, but they don't feel like they're all that hot, really. Try these 158 grain hand loads of mine. 
they probably have a little more kick to them. A little bit more. There's one. I don't know where that went either. Bring them down maybe. There we go. I'm going a little high, I think. I couldn't tell what that did. I saw a flinch there. That flinching don't help nothing. All right, let's just go back over here on these plates. I mean, I really don't know much else to say about this revolver. It's not a bad looking gun, styling wise. Um, honestly, looking at it, I, I get the feeling just looking at it, if I didn't know anything about this gun, I mean, you can tell it's a budget gun uh, just by the, the etching in it, the engraving. You know, strangely enough, it says 38 Special on the top here. And then in a different etching, it says 357 Mag underneath it. Now, these come in 38 Specials as well. So, which leads me to believe they were originally a 38 Special. And they just keep using the same barrels uh, for the 357 Mag. Now, I'm assuming they have to make some changes to the cylinder, uh, you know, to beef it up a little bit. Different heat treating or whatever. Um... But, you know, it, it's almost like 357 Mag is just an afterthought on there. But you would expect 357 Mag to be the main thing that's etched on the side. So, it's not going to win a beauty contest. You know, it's not going to beat out a, a Colt Python or a Korth or a Smith & Wesson or any of those for beauty. But it's not a bad looking gun either. Well, I'm going to try double action on these red plates. See if I can do anything with it. single action again if there's any left. There we go. That double action pull is just hard. Hard. Hard to control. Guys, I really don't know a whole lot to say. You know, if you're looking for a budget revolver, um, you know, this one seems to be beefy, fairly well made. The trigger double action is not good, but I know a lot of people shoot single action anyway. If you're one of those people that don't really shoot double action no matter what revolver you got, uh, then this would be just as good because single action is pretty good on it. It seems to be an accurate revolver. If you can do your part and you can control that trigger pull, it seems to put them where it's supposed to be. So, uh, you know, that's uh, always a plus. Uh, if I had to choose between this and the Charter Arms Professional, I'm probably going to choose the Charter Arms Professional. Um, it's a three-inch barrel, which I really like three-inch barrels to in this size revolver. Uh, I think it's the, the perfect blend of of carryability and shootability. It's kind of that sweet spot between the, the snub nose and the four-inch. But there's nothing wrong with the four-inch either. Uh, but I'm probably going to choose the Charter Arms Professional. But I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to dog this uh, revolver out either. I'm not going to say this isn't uh, worthy of putting your money into from what I've seen. Um, you know, if this is what's available and you need uh, a gun for home protection or, or you just want a 357 mag revolver to shoot, you know, there's nothing wrong with this gun. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm trying to be as positive as I can. Uh, that trigger is obviously a negative. The force and cone is obviously a negative. But for the average person who probably shoots more single action than double action because you're not a, a real wheel gun aficionado and who doesn't shoot a lot of super hot 357 loads, you know, that force and cone and this double action trigger probably doesn't make a lot of difference. If you're a wheel gun aficionado, this is probably not one you're going to love. You know, if you really like wheel guns and you carry them for self-defense and you use double action, you know, don't get this gun. I'm just going to be honest about it. You know, they make them in the snub nose version. Do not get that gun. My personal opinion. There are better options out there for, for self-defense if you're going to carry it. Because in that situation, you want to be able to shoot double action. And 
you really have to concentrate and in, in, in a high stress situation you're going to be hard pressed to be accurate with this in double action just unless you're superman you know and then you know weight is nothing to you on, on the trigger pull uh you know there's guys out there i'm sure Jerry mitchellek would have no trouble shooting accurately with this gun but i'm not him so um uh, my personal opinion is if you're looking for a gun to carry for for personal protection for self-defense where you really need to shoot in double action this is not the gun i think that you you really need if you just want to come out on the range and shoot and you're going to be shooting single action most of the time here you go i mean there's nothing wrong with this it's extremely accurate so that's my take on it i mean other people may see it differently but uh that's my opinion for what little it's worth so guys appreciate it uh make sure you check out the description the description has a link there for the goa the gun owners of america for a discounted membership where you can get in the fight on the national level and they also work in your state as well fighting for our gun rights and i've also got a link there for the tfa the tennessee firearms association where we're doing a lot of fighting here in tennessee right now over a lot of things that have happened in these red flag laws that uh the governor is trying to push down uh the legislature's throat and trying to strong arm them into passing i'm hoping it's not going to what i'm hearing is that the legislature is not going to go for it but you never know until the that special session happens so if you would if you haven't and and you live in the state of tennessee and you want to secure your your rights here join the goa uh, and and the tfa uh, the tfa is is fighting right now these red uh flag laws as is the goa here in in the in uh, the state of tennessee so Anyway, guys, appreciate you coming out. God bless you. Y'all take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time.